Thank you for the kind introduction. Yeah, I like photography, but I don't like photographing people. Um, I, I may not try. Um, all right, thank you for being here. Good morning, everyone. Um, so this talk is about Ballerina. Actually, it's a new programming language, so my focus is on introducing it today, because I, I assume that um, most of you have not heard the language. So without going into deep, I'm going to quickly introduce the language. That's my focus. Um, and this is my first time at LambdaConf, so it's exciting. And, and, and again, the pre-conference heist was exciting too. I, I mean, most of us picked the advanced hike, uh, labeled as beginner and advanced, so I had to pick the advanced. Um, but it was fun. It's good to be here. Um, all right. So just a bit about me. Um, I'm from a company called WSO2. It's a US company. Um, I'm based in Seattle. Um, so I'm part of the Balna uh, language group as well as a part of the development group as well. Um, so yeah. Before we start the talk, I just want to be straight. Um, so I'm glad that John, in the opening remark, said this conference used to be focusing on programming functional languages. But Balna is, I wouldn't call it as a pure functional language. It has functional aspects, but it has OOP aspects, the data-oriented programming aspects. So uh, sorry to disappoint. Um, it's not a functional programming talk. Uh, all right. So before I introduce the language, I want to talk a little bit about like cloud, uh, because that has an impact on how we design the new language, how, uh, how we design Ballerina. So when you look at data access, even though I call it pre-cloud, it's still applicable. So here I'm talking about data access and APIs. So when you talk about data access, um, we usually read write from files or databases, right, in mostly. Um, but with the cloud computing and having microservices, architecture, distributed computing, most of the time you access data via invoking other systems, right? You call a network service via HTTP, gRPC, GraphQL, uh, or you provide services to others. That's how uh, a microservices architecture works. Um, and if you look at APIs, you know, we, one approach is we bundled all libraries into a single executable application, so that API calls mean just function calls, in-process function calls. But when you look at cloud-native applications, you can, you still do in-process function calls, but Mostly what you are seeing is function calls over the network. Right? You do gRPC call, RPC, HTTP like REST, uh, REST APIs, or GraphQL. So in a micro microservices ar architecture, you usually talk about uh, function calls over the network. So what we have seen is these changes has complicated how you design and develop applications. Right? because you have to think about network all the time. You can't hide the fact that you are using a network call, and you have errors, you have to handle transient failures, a lot of complexities. Um, so when we look at existing languages, what we have noticed is um, there are not enough high-level abstractions available in the existing languages. I'm talking about like Java, C Sharp, perhaps Go, right? Um, to handle the increased complexity. That's why we thought of coming up with a new language. We call it modern programming language. The modern is basically defined here. Uh, this was to, from a Java, modern Java platform talk. I think it's correctly identified what, what, what do I mean by modern here. All right. So Ballerina is a pragmatic language. It's not a research language, as in we want people to build applications and deploy in production, run it in enterprises, um, right? So the fundamental idea is, if you look at Ballerina, we want to make it easier to write um, applications that you know, consume and provide network services. That's a fundamental idea. Everything in the language designed to support this goal. If you look at how we handle data, how we represent data, the type system design, to concurrence design, network abstractions, everything is designed to support this goal. I'll talk about that in a second. 
So it's not just a language, as in, in a modern language, just like you see today, um, just the compiler and the language is not enough. You need everything, like let's say, package manager, build system, test framework, a way to share packages on the internet, like, and then IDEs. Not easy to come up with a new language today. So you need all that to, um, you know, if you want a language to be adopted. So Balna is a complete platform. I'll show you most of the stuff. Uh, because we, we want it to be a pragmatic language that we want people to adapt, uh, we went ahead with this design principle as well. Um, we tried hard to maintain the C style syntax, actually. Like, so if you're familiar with any C languages, you'll be familiar with uh, Ballerina C, like C, Java, Kotlin, C Sharp. But the semantics are very different. I'll talk about that. Right? Um, so Ballerina is not verbose like Java. I have to say that first. But we, may, we favor maintainability of the language, of your code, as in, um, so there are tra these are actually trade-offs, right? So you can design a language, you prefer powerful, you know, expressive languages, um, or else a little bit of verbosity so that the code can be readable over the years. Because the enterprise application, when you look at them, you write once maybe, or multiple times, but it's maintained over the years. So there are several teams working on it. Um, so we went ahead with this design principle as well. All right. A little bit of type system design goes uh, before I move into the demo. So when you look at the type system of the language, we design it such a way that it works. Um, the first one is very simple. It's, you, you see that in every language, right? So you want a type system that describes the values that you want to work in the programming language. The second one, so by default, when you declare variable, let's say, not like simple types like integers and booleans, but structural value like record, map, or tuple, array. By default, they are all mutable in Ballerina. But there's a keyword you can say read only. When you do that, it becomes immutable. So we support immutable types and values as well. But by default, we all values are mutable. That's the idea. Um, <clears throat> So the types are designed so that you can easily describe messages flowing through the network, like JSON, XML. Let's say in the gRPC, you have protobuf, like binary, binary serialization. So the type system is designed so you can easily describe the structure of those network payloads. I'll, I'll get to those points. Um, so the release, there is a relationship to Java. Uh, the reason is, even though when you look at Ballerina, it's the language design is uh, not related to Java at all. Um, there's, there's separate language design. We decided to implement the first compiler to target the JVM. So that's the design choice we had, because it, we thought it, it was much quicker to come up with a compiler that targets JVM, because you get the memory management, garbage compiler, concurrency by default. Um, and because of that, we support Java interoperability as well. Uh, the second point is, um, as I said earlier, uh, if you look at the Java uh, Balina language design, there's, we have not adapted any Java semantics into the language. So very different semantics, even though we use JVM. So we have a, a thin layer on top of Java, so Balina runtime, that to do all this, um, conversions between Java values to Balina values. Because when you look at um, Java 17, their concurrency model and Balina concurrency model is different, so we need a, a small layer <coughs> to support that. And we are also working on an LLVM-based implementation. Um, this, it'll take time, but that is uh, in the roadmap. And with that, probably we could generate Assam as well. Uh, that's part of the plan. Um, right now, we, we, don't, we can't generate Assam because we are targeting JVM. So that, um, during the demo, the version of Balna I'm using is the uh, up-to-date version. 
uh, that attacks JVM. So the next one, now what is Ballerina, why it is unique? Um, to answer that question, I'll quickly um, write some code and, and show you, I think that's the best way to describe the language. So I'll quickly move on to this. So if you are um, first time hearing Ballerina, it's called Ballerina IO, the website. Um, so you can, of course, download the um, compiler. Uh, and then we have a VS Code plugin. You can install that. That will be the easiest path to get started. Or else if you are just interested in looking at the code, bunch of examples, um, basically describing the language concepts, various language as aspects. And then because it's designed for networking, we have several um, um, transport protocol support and data formats, so you, uh, gRPC to HTTP, um, various things, right? And then there are a bunch of, um, let me go back, examples. I'm going to take a quick look at it. Um, bunch of examples there. All right, so I have downloaded Balna already. Uh, when you download, you have this, is it good enough? Yeah. So we have this little BAL tool. That is how you interact with the compiler. Um, and it's like a, um, like, like any language, it's like a Swiss Army knife, you can do anything. Um, you can build your projects, you can run, you can test it, or you can, um, um, so we have a concept called packages, so you can create packages and share them, all that, and there are a bunch of utility commands. If you want to look at the dependency graph and format, all that, so it's, it's a bell tool. So if I look at the version, I'm using the latest version, which is Ballerina Swan Lake um, Update 9. I have a slide on the history. We'll, we'll talk about the versions later. Um, so how you start a new project, bell new. I'm going to uh, use the name countries, because I'm, my demo is related to countries. Um, so I'm going to use the bell new countries. Uh, so this will uh, create a package. Oh, sorry, let me delete this one. I missed to delete the existing one. All right, I'll create bell new countries. And then I'm going to cd into that and open this with VS Code. Code it, it'll open VS Code. So by default, when you generate a Balina package, we uh, generate a bunch of files. The first one is TOML file, which is like you know the package identifier. It identifies a directory as a Balina package. Simple as that. Bunch of key value pairs, and then the simple hello world function. The font size is okay, I assume? Good? Okay. Um, so this is the simplest program you could write in Ballerina. Um, so it's, I think it's very simple. Let's quickly run it and see. Um, so there's a function. I'm going to use bal run, which will compile and generate executable and run it then and there. Right? Uh, it doesn't sim like go run. Um, and then I can do bal build, which, which will generate a self-contained executable here. And then you could do bal run jar, or like if you have a Java installed, you could do this as well. Right now we recommend Java 17. I have installed 20, so that's why the warning. But it works. It's, you just need the JVM. Everything else is included in the compile, in the executable binary. All right, so that's simple. Um, so this is a module or a package in Ballerina. And then you use IO colon to access what's inside that. Pretty straightforward, um, right? We have a colon instead of dot. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's simple. So the demo I'm going to do today is, first I, I'm going to start to consume this um, World Bank country API. That's my first task. So there is this API. Let's say if I copy the URL. 
you should get a JSON, right? Uh, I'm gonna show you that quickly, the format. Um, let's do a simple curl here before we write any code um, and format it using JQ. So you see, um, by default, it has Brazil in the payload, so that's country code. It gives, gives me some details about that country. You know, the ISO2 name, region information, cap, capital city, longitude and latitude. Simple API, so I'm gonna consume this in Ballerina quickly. So the way to do that in Ballerina is we have this HTTP library, Ballerina HTTP. I'm gonna create a client. So client is a sort of abstraction in Ballerina. I'll talk about that a little bit later. So client is an abstraction and individual transport protocols can come up with their own client versions. You have HTTP client, you have a gRPC client, GraphQL client, so that's it. It abstracts how you talk to uh, this URL. Let's say this is World Bank, and I'm gonna create a new client by giving the URL. So let's get the URL from here. I'm gonna get parts till V2. Right? So now there's an error here because it says this expression. This expression can fail, um, probably due to malformed URL, something like that, at runtime, if there's an error. Um, so this expression can fail, so when you look at the error message, um, if it's successful, I should get a client. If not, I'll get an error. So in Ballerina, that aspect is represented as a union type, um, so you have a HTTP client or error, that is sort of the type of this expression, right? And then I could do, I could do a type test. World bank is error. So if it's an error, now I have to handle the error. So what do I do? I, ca I, I could do a println for now, I could do a log, doesn't matter. And there are, let's say you are doing multiple calls like that, multiple calls that can give you errors. So what do you do? Uh, one option is you have to handle each and every occurrence or you can just pass that error to call E or the caller, sorry. So here I'm gonna do that. I'm simply, yeah, passing the error back. So this function has to return an error. So I'm gonna say error, but uh, this function returns error not all the time, sometimes, so I can say it's optional returns an error. It's an optional type. So optional type is again a sugar coating or syntax tick sugar for like another union type, right? So nil is a type in Ballerina. It's like represent nothing. So I'm gonna do this. So if you remember this pattern of handling the error is pretty common in some languages. Um, do something, if error do something, right? So most of the time, if you return, then we have made this a little bit simpler. There's a keyword called check in front of expressions. You can do that. When you do that, sorry, what happens here is it changes the semantics of this expression. The idea here is if this expression fails with an error, return the function. If it doesn't fail, then move on. Right. So then now the type of World Bank is client, all good. So I'm gonna make a quick get request. So I'm using the arrow here, I'll talk about the arrow syntax later. So if you remember, if we go back to the URL, we have a country, that is the resource I want to access, right? I want to get a country. So I'm gonna uh, do a client, country, let's hard code US for now and do a get, and I need to send the, um, this query parameter, and that's it. So if you compare this with the URL, here URL we have the up to v2 is declared in the client, and then I'm accessing certain resources. There can be countries, regions, multiple resources. I'm accessing only the country, and I'm giving this path param, so here's path param, and the query param. And it's a get request, HTTP get request. Like you could do post now. This returns the JSON. This is 
payload is a JSON, what I could do is, we have a built-in type called JSON in Ballerina, so I could do payload. And this can fail, so I'm gonna do a check again. Right. And then let's print it. Right, so this is pretty simple. Let's run it. And I'll do JQ as well. So I got the payload. Right? It's pretty straightforward, Balana syntax. Um, first one, creating a client. Second one, do a get request. Um, right, that's all, and then print it. Now what I'm getting is a JSON payload. What's the, so if, let, me, let me copy this JSON into a, a file so that I can talk a bit more about this structure of the JSON. Let's create a file called payload just JSON and put it here. If you look at the structure of the JSON, uh, we can probably think it's untyped. It is definitely untyped, except for certain fields. When you look at this field, you know it's definitely number, right? And this is a string, and booleans, right? And also like here in the JSON spec, it says this is a JSON object. And here is a JSON array. So when you look at this complete payload, it's an array. Array with two elements, right? So you have an array, you have a, another JSON object, and another array. Now, I uh, in note now, my goal here is to basically manipulate the payload and extract some properties out of it. How do I do that? So in the Ballerina recommended way is to describe the structure of the JSON using Ballerina type system. Write some types so that you can describe the JSON. Let's see. So I'm going to describe this as a tuple in Ballerina, because like, when you look at all these payloads, you see this common pattern where it's an array, and you have first element is some JSON payload, like related to pagination, which I don't want to deal with. And the second one is another JSON array where I see the country details. Right, so what I'm gonna do here is, I'm define a type, let's say, World Bank payload. I'm going to make it a tuple. What would be the members of the tuple? The first one, I, I don't care. It's a key value pairs, list of key value pairs. It's a JSON object. In Balna, we have a type called any data, which you can represent any kind of data. Integer, Boolean, map, record, anything, right? So I'm going to just call any data. The second one is an array of countries. But right now what we are getting is a single country, but it's an array of countries. So I'm gonna do another type, world, bank, let's say country, which is going to be a record in Ballerina. And here I'm interested in ID, perhaps name, let's say. I want ID. I want name, and let's say perhaps I need capital city. Right, that's it, that's enough for now, right? So define a type, and then I'm gonna say, now I have a, uh, so this is the type that describes this payload. So I'm gonna say instead of JSON here, I'm gonna do this. It should work. So when you look at the code, um, there's a little bit of dependent typing at work here, because now, based on the left-hand side type, this expression decides which type to return. Now, because I have JSON here, expression returns JSON, but if I put another type, it will basically do the binding automatically. It'll, this expression will create a type that is on the left-hand side and return, if it works. And now I can easily, in a type-safe way, I can extract the payload information. Let's say payload is a tuple, right? That's what I described here. So I'm gonna get the second value, right? Second value is another array, sorry. This is my fault, this has to be this. It's an array of countries. So the second value is another array, so I'm gonna do the first element, and it's a country, now I have a country, 
and I need the name. So it's automatically figured out everything. So it's type safe um, navigation of the JSON payload. Right? Let's do a. I don't need JQ now. So I should get United States. Because if you look at the payload, uh, it's there, right? So what I have done in, is basically describing Balna, using Balna types, I have described JSON, right? So that's a simple consumer. Now if I want to like see what's going on, this is very simple. I can even visualize this using a sequence diagram in Ballerina. This is what you, this is the code looks like. If, if there are like, let's say, multiple services, databases, you would see the sequence diagram improves. Um, let's see what I can do here. That's all because of the abstractions their language. Compiler knows that you are doing a network call versus a normal local function call. Um, right, so the next one is, I think I have one or two minutes, right? OK, I'll do a quick service. So service is a concept in Ballerina, right? So it is a way to describe providing services. So we have, you can bind the service to a bunch of protocols. Let's say we have HTTP support, GraphQL. If you're interested, you have TCP, UDP level as well. So I'm going to do HTTP. World Bank is the base path. Let's say port is 8091. And I'm going to represent this as a resource function. Get, and the path is, path is country. And there is a query parameter, let's say, country code. And that's it. It returns World Bank country. All right. So this is a simple REST API in Ballerina. And then I'm going to move this code and see how it works. And then probably I should return the country, right? Formatted, I'm gonna commit this function. So what, what we have here is a simple RESTful, REST REST API. It has a single um, resource called country, and it accepts a path parameter, right? So let's quickly invoke this. So I'm going to do bal run, and then another terminal. Let's do a curl on this. Sorry, there is a compilation error. OK. Because I'm not using the ID, unused modules error, so I can delete it and run it. Do a curl. So now it's localhost. Localhost colon port 1891. Base path is World Bank slash country slash, let's say, GB. But you are probably, yeah, you got, but you are getting the USA because um, I have hard coded here. I can change that to use the uh, country code. So that, that will do. Um, so, <clears throat> so these are the basically. Um, quickly, I showed you like uh, c how do you consume and how do you provide services, and then how do you describe your network messages using types. Right? Um, there's some concurrency work at, uh, at play here. Let's say I, I'm going to quickly move this uh, uh, type, this construction of the client outside, and then now what do you see uh, when I try to compile this? Um, you would see some a warning, let's say, bal build. It's giving me a warning saying concurrent calls for this to this service will not be made. Um, the idea is like by default, balna try to invoke this resource concurrently, like if you have multiple requests. But whenever you have um, sort of data races, uh, balna like um, compile time, it can detect certain things like. This is a simple example. Um, if, if I simply make this final, this warning will go away. Right, but let's say if I do int a like a counter, and if I try to 
let's say a plus equals one, it's gonna quickly figure out that the data register, so it's gonna give me a warning. So if it, if it, if it figures out it's safe to invoke, it'll invoke concurrently, or parallelly, actually. If not, it will give you a warning, you have to fix it. So I don't think, uh, so that's a bit about Ballerina. Um, and I'll quickly go through a couple of other things I covered. Um, as I said earlier, it's a complete platform. Um, it's again open source, free to download and free to use. Um, no vendor locking at all. Um, so it's been in the work making for like six years, but in 2022, we made the first release. So it's been two years like after the public release. It's pretty early for a language. Um, so let's see how it goes. Um, so if you are interested, um, this is the community. Um, take a look at the website and engage. That's it. Thank you.